I finished the last big thing I was struggling with. Inventory items. Da da da. So I had to ask for help on this because I was really struggling. And eventually I did manage to get this down to something very smooth and very easy. And that was the goal. I wanted everybody to have the ability to have some kind of inventory system that would make their game easier to make. Rather than introducing lots of edge cases and complexity, I wanted something that was smooth and would never cause problems. And that's a tough order, because Unreal is terrible at UI. Nobody would ever disagree with me on that. Unreal's weak point is the UI. It's terrible. And it's made a lot worse because of how it interacts differently with different kinds of inputs, and of course there's an entirely new kind of input that's only used for a specific plugin that everybody always recommends you use. Oh, it was a mess, right? So I decided to go with a completely passive system. This screen here has no inputs. It takes no inputs. It cannot be focused on. It is just this, right? It works equally well with the old input system, the new input system, with a mouse, with a controller. You can just set it up for whatever you're using and go. Of course, it does have a limitation that uh, it's just eight slots and um, you know it's just a direct action. You can't combine an inventory item with another inventory item on this sort of setup. But it is very, very easy to use, and that is the point. Not only is it easy to use in terms of UI, it's also easy to use in terms of development, because adventure game items are significantly different than items in other kinds of games. Most games have categories of items, like these are potions, these are weapons, and you can equip these, you can drink these, and then they have an effect based on that, and this and the other thing. They have generic effects that take place anywhere you use them, right? But adventure game items are the opposite. They're all contextual. Their generic use is always just something that says, this isn't how you're supposed to use this item. And then they have a specific use that's linked to some location in the game world. So in this case, we've walked upstairs, and instead of saying that there's no signal, it says that we can't get completed calls. To show you that again, go downstairs, trigger it down here. Go back upstairs. This should make your adventure games much easier to build because that complexity is not on the item. It's in the game world. The item is just a, a sprite and a link to a default thing to say when you use the item, but there's nothing looking for it. So let's go over it. First off, this pop-up, what is it? Well, this is a simple widget, a user widget, like you might see anywhere else. Uh, it has no interactive parts. There's no buttons, nothing that can take focus, nothing like that. I'm manually looking at the mouse and telling it to activate one of these as pink so that you know which one's activated. And then when you let up with the right mouse button, it selects whichever one is activated. So if you don't, it does nothing. If you select it, it pops up. See? Pretty basic. So. From there, how does this all work? Well, let's pop it open and take a peek. There it is. So we've got this adventure invent this adv this inventory widget in our adventure game, and it's eight identical inventory slots that I arranged around because that seemed like the easiest possible way to do things, and they're all named slot north, slot northeast, slot east, so on and so forth, right all the way around. Now these are their own inventory, these are their own widgets, right? So I'm, I'm putting widgets inside widgets here, and I'm not too concerned about that. It's a little bit flabby, but it's an adventure game. We're not looking to hit 60 frames per second of real-time graphics, you know, it's, it's fine like this. So over the course of creating it, what we do is, first we assign the correct slots into the slot list. Here it is. I don't know why you can't do this with the defaults. It's just somehow they won't actually take widgets that are within this item. It's just a weakness in how they are setting it up. So you have to manually create it at runtime. And then we go through and we look at the adventure game state and everything in our inventory. We go through our inventory and we add each one of these items to our inventory list. So our inventory is a list of classes. The cell phone class is in our inventory. So basically all we really do is we say 
take that class and spawn a widget from it. Tell that inventory spot that it is ready for an item and then add an item to it. All this does is make sure you can see it because I don't want to show you empty slots on your inventory, right? So that's it. That's all you do. And of course, every tick we look around and um, here it is. We look around for the mouse point, uh, the mouse mo motion here, and we just do this nonsense here, which is not as complicated as it looks. We're just doing a, a dot product to get the northness and the east eastness, and then I just did this very simple set of if statements to determine how north and how east you're looking and which slot that means you're looking at. I'm sure there is a more elegant way to do this. I couldn't figure it out off the top of my head, and this is pretty easy to understand, so I'm not too concerned. Basically, we start at zero as north, and then we just count around clockwise. The other logic here is all pretty basic, right? We want to make sure that the player doesn't walk around while their inventory is up, and we want to make sure that the mouse isn't wedged in a corner somewhere so that we can actually tell where it's moving. That's pretty much it. When we delete it, we want to restore it, restore, restore the player's move, movement, and also tell the game world that an inventory item was used. Now the thing that's responsible for all of the inventory items getting used is not the inventory itself. Instead, all it does is pass the fact that an item was used down into the game controller, the, uh, the game state. The game state is then responsible for actually doing all of the work. Here it is. Handle inventory item use. This means that you can force it to use inventory items. You could have it use an inventory item when the player enters a particular area instead of having the player use it, that would work fine. But basically all it does is it goes through all of those zones and it sees whether or not any of those zones match. The first zone that matches gets to do its thing and that's the end. If none of them match, the first zone that has an override for defaults gets to do its thing and if there's none of those, then you get the items default. It's very, very basic, right? This spawn actor here and here these spawn in the, the default sequences, because the sequences are technically actors. So when it pops up to say, dot dot dot, couldn't connect, that's actually an actor saying that. That's just how, how it works. Um, and that's the complexity of it. Here is the zone in question. So this zone is what will allow you to make a failed call instead of not having enough signal. And you can see that I set it with the target item of the cell phone. That, of course, targets the class of cell phone. So anything with a class of cell phone will trigger this. And it triggers this adventure script handler here in here. This. And of course, you can change the size by changing the sphere radius as you please. This setup allows you to put all of the complexity that you might want for any given item into the game world instead of trying to uh, coded into the item itself. The cell phone doesn't know what you're trying to do. It can. If you wanted it to have more complexity, you can add that complexity. But by default, it doesn't know what you're trying to do. So all it does is say a default thing when you use it. If you use it somewhere where you're in a zone that accepts cell phones, that zone takes over and that zone says what you should do instead. It's a simple setup and you can use it yourself without any difficulty and it keeps everything super, super basic because the only complexity that you add is limited to the one spot, the physical spot where you're adding that complexity. That's it. I think it's a pretty good setup. Let me know what you think uh, and goodbye.